Hello and welcome to the channel. Now today it's battle time. We have three normals, each with five ingredients at their disposal. The question is, what will they be creating? Boys, before we set you on your way, tell us what you're going to cook. Barry? Let me talk you through my ingredients. I have a cauliflower. I have a loaf of ciabatta. Some stuffed red peppers. Nduya sausage. And some delicious scallops. And what are you creating? I'm making a cauliflower triple threat with nduya scallops. What's the triple threat? Oh, yeah. You'll find out. That's because you don't know, do you? Yeah. <laughs> and Jay? I've got pizza dough, frozen veg with a handy garlic and herb butter as a berry bonus, pancetta, garlic and herb cream cheese, pecorino. Solid choices. What are you doing with it? Two cheese pizza. I am making udon noodle primavera with gnocco frito. Oh, sorry. <laughs> we'll get to the translations later. Where are your udon noodles? You don't know what I'm going to be doing, no. so... No. Yep. You have this thing about just offending all Italians. I feel like it's just your mantra now. I am working with Amaretti Biscuits. I've opened it, I've had a few, I've checked them, they're okay. <laughs> Alcoholic sweet cherries. A lemon. Chocolate. Silken tofu. Are you going sweet? I am going sweet. Five ingredients in a savoury dish is a challenge. Mm. In sweet, you can make an entire wedding cake with five ingredients. I'm going to make something that when up against yours, people are going to go, I'll have that one, thanks, Mike. Black Forest chocolate goo pot trifle. Well, now we know. Let the challenge begin in three, two, one, go. I need to get weighing. So, Baz, you're starting with your most cumbersome ingredient, the cauliflower. Yeah, it's an ingredient I've been using quite a lot recently because um, it's really versatile. The three ways I'm using today, I'm roasting it, I'm couscousing it, and I'm pureeing it. Is that a bit like cauliflower rice, but... Yeah, a little bit smaller. <laughs> OK. Let's, yeah. So to start with, I need to get a handful of florets. You could have chosen any ingredient. Yep. Why didn't you just choose pasta rather than choose pizza dough and make it into pasta? Because I can use this in two different ways, whereas if I just chose fresh pasta, I'd only be able to use it in one way. Oh, I like what you've done with the wooden spoons. That's going to be my pasta dryer. For the rice and the puree, um, I'm using most of the florets, all of the stalk, um, blitzing it up uh, into a couscous, then using half of that for my couscous. The other half, I'm going to boil in some water to soften for my puree. The wonderful thing about these sweet, alcoholic and preserved cherries are all those reasons, and I'm going to utilise them across the dish. For example, I'm going to use the liquid to soak some amaretti biscuits in, so they take on all that flavour and it changes the texture. Dark chocolate melting over a bain-marie. If you've been set the challenge of cooking with just five ingredients, it's really important that you pick those ingredients carefully. For me, they either need to be things that can be used in multiple ways, like the pizza dough, like the cauliflower, or things that are so wonderfully delicious they don't need to be messed with and simplicity is their key, like the boozy cherries. I feel like, so far, some clever choices. He's talking about mine, guys. This is silken tofu and we featured it in a video a while back and it's absolutely amazing. It's kind of an amazing substitute for yogurt, thickening, things like that and it creates an incredible chocolate ganache. So I thought, let's use it. Let's make, let's actually take something that I've seen in a video and try and implement that into my actual cooking. Except last time we did it as chocolate and coffee, as a really simple chocolate pot. This time you've added in flavours of the Black Forest. Yes, the chocolate, but also cherry and almond and booze, which is always a good thing. I know my audience, Evers. I eat you. You've had 15 minutes of your 45. So what I'm doing is just squeezing out the excess water before I chuck it into a food processor with some more of the cherry liquid and blend it all up. When I've made this before, I've not bothered to drain that liquid because actually that can help make a really, really lovely loose pudding mix. But because you're adding in additional liquid in the form of alcohol, it's necessary to take one out and put one in. So Barry's got cauliflower three ways in action. They want to get a bit of colour on the outside of that and then into the oven um, to cook through. In the meantime, 
I've got half my cauliflower couscous in a pan, boiling in some water to cook it through. Other half in a bowl, which is going to go in the microwave with my other ingredients. I've cut my pizza dough in half, and I'm going to use each half in a different way. One is going to be rolled really thin to become gnocco frito. We're going to fry those off later. The other half is going to be rolled thicker and then cut into strips and dried to make my noodles. Why don't you come join me at my pasta drying station? Everything's got to be a station or location <laughs> with you. <laughs> Lovely. Oh, this is stuck a bit. Oh, that's not good. That's not good. Oh, that's not good. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> Flavours wise, I've got my ciabatta loaf, which conveniently comes with some olives inside of it. I'm taking those out and sticking that through my couscous. As well oh, you're as not the... leaving the olives in the bread? No, no, no. I'm you're de... buying a loaf of bread that has olives in and you're taking the olives out of the bread to use elsewhere? It's one ingredient then. And then also, I'm then taking the goat's cheese out of my stuffed peppers and using the peppers in my couscous as well. And the goat's cheese is going into my puree. Interesting. So a bit of a juggling act on the front. You're buying ingredients that are made up of multiple and then dividing them. I was very close to buying a sandwich. <laughs> Even if you pick the olives out of that bread, the bread around it is still going to taste olivey. Yeah, exactly. And it's going to be like, it's all, it's all really herby. It's carrying on a beautiful flavour. Go on, have a bit. No. It's, it's oliveless. No, it's not oliveless. It's got a nuance. I genuinely, though, we've talked about it before. Things like Bombay mix. There's already a selection of things and spice in there. It's doing half the job for you. I think Nduya is a really good example. You've already got the fats, but you've also got the flavour and the spice and the meat. The same with Jamie's smoked pancetta. You've got the fat, you've got the flavour and you've got the meat. Some ingredients doing multiple things. Delicious. Half of my cherry flavoured gooey tofu is going in with my now melted chocolate. Now, interesting, you've got a bit of leeway with this because you don't need to set it to cut it. It's going to be scoopable in a glass pot. So the texture has a tolerance. But you spent so long weighing everything out at the start and then you eyeballed the half. Let's talk about my primavera sauce. Pancetta, frying off in a pan, render out that fat, get it all nice and golden brown and crispy. Remove that, pop that into a bowl and then back into the pan goes my frozen vegetables along with its lovely Barry Bonus garlic and herb butter. Plus my garlic and herb cream cheese going into there, plus my pecorino. Double cheese. Double cheese, bit of water, sauce baby. So once my olives are in my couscous mix, the bread is then being torn up and put onto a tray with, some, with, a, with a big dollop of nduya. That's going to cook down, the undue is going to spread, then coat it all in that lovely juices, and then sugar really crispy as well. All about those defined layers. I'm kind of glad to see Mike is taking his time to smear chocolate around the inside of a glass. Can you tip whatever's in that jug out of it so I can use it, please? No, because I'm using it now. No, but I need to use it. That's great, that's really good to know, but you missed your chance. You said you were using it early, and you didn't, so I'm using it now. So a division of ingredients, the cheese going into the cauliflower puree and the peppers going into the couscous with the olives. Whoa. 10 minutes left. Now the beautiful thing about cauliflower in a puree is it's a vegetable with a lot of pectin in it. And therefore, you get a very thick, glossy, inverted commas, creamy puree out of a vegetable with no added dairy, albeit it has got the cheese in there. Oh, I love that goat cheese. Ebers, let's talk about building flavour. Some sauce, some fresh veg. Add it all back in, into the pancetta with all of the fat. Sauce, baby. Now I've combined some of my cherries with the remaining tofu mixture and I'm adding my final ingredient, which is a squeeze of lemon. Um, again, when we tested this dish, it was very sweet, very creamy, and just needed that acidity. And we had a spare ingredient to use, so we went for lemon. As always, when we're using limited ingredients, it's about getting the most out of them. So zest and juice of the same citrus fruit is key. Interesting, Mike's gone to juice his lemon before the zesting, which he also needs for his recipe. Now there's lemon juice on my finger, so I have no idea whether that was balanced. My dip is one of the easiest things I've ever made. 
garlic and herb cheese, grated pecorino, little bit of warm water, lots of black pepper, whippity whip, 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 whip. Job's good. My thinly rolled out pizza dough has been cut into squares and is now gonna go into hot oil for a one to two minutes on each side before resting on some kitchen paper and adding lots of black pepper. There's a theme going on here. I'm gonna be honest, Jay, that just reminds me of beignets from New Orleans, that kind of yeasted dough that gets rolled flat and then fried. Puffs yeah. up a little, crispy and golden, perfect Beautiful. with powdered sugar. Beautiful to dip into a cream cheese and garlic and herb dip. Am I right? Interested to see how your cauliflower is, Baz, because the recipe said roast for eight minutes. Yours was in there for 30. What's this, Mike? This is zesting a pre-juiced lemon ebbers. It's what all the top restaurants are doing these days. I kind of meant the thing on your board, but fine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You've highlighted your error. This is a chocolatey crumble, and um, I'm aware that I will be judged for the amount of bowls that I've been using. So I just thought, do it on the board. No, absolutely. Final step, cook my pasta in the water for about a minute and then tip it into the sauce, bring it all together. Last two minutes. I'm gonna serve family style because that's what I'm best at. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And a cherry on top to finish. Did you want that? Yes, yeah, what I wanted. Could you mind? I can't, the time's just oh, stopped, isn't God. it? So. Okay, let's get these dishes into the sexies. Straight off, before we've even tasted them, it looks great. Let's start with the, the starter, albeit a hefty portion. He's, Has he he's, decided he's, it's yeah, a starter? He's, he's it could also be a main course, but I just like the idea that we've got starter. I like things to have structure. Oh, cheers. Cheers. Oh, I remember you saying there were olives in it now. The rest of it's very nice. I have to keep going back for more because there is so much going on. Because you're looking for flavour. For isn't just it? five ingredients. <laughs> The puree is really cheesy and smooth. I like the fact you've used the cauliflower leaves as you roast it off as well. The scallops are well cooked, and I mean like cooked well, not well cooked. Yep. And altogether, the flavours are incredible. I think that andouille goes an awful long way. Mm. It's fantastic, mate. There were things that you changed from the recipe the food team wrote. They said higher temperature for lower time in the oven. You did a lower temperature for a higher time, but you've ended up with great results. That has set the bar dangerously high for these two. What, what's odd about this is it's, Where do you start? is it's boiled bread, which is like bagel, but without the good bit, which is baking it afterwards. Cheers. It's a thicker, chewy pasta. It's bouncy. It's bouncy, but it's, it's pleasant. Um, don't use the word pleasant. It's definitely rich, and it's definitely hearty, and yet there is a freshness to this plate with all of those veg, and despite the fact they are frozen veg, mm. you know, frozen veg has moved on so much. The quality of those, you've still got a bite of the green beans, mm. you've still got a pop mm. of pea, yeah. even though they've been frozen and then you've cooked them. As an entry, you've essentially got three different things out of your five ingredients, yeah. and each one delivers. But I kind of feel like oh, that- Ebbers, Ebbers, Ebbers! Would also help because the only thing this dish is missing is a bit of texture because it's quite stodgy with the soup and the boiled bread noodles. That's why they're on the side. That's the point of difference. Well, what I was gonna say before we make a mess of it is I quite like the irregularity of the layers because I think it either has to be perfect or deliberately a bit more homemade. And I'm presuming you've gone for the latter, in which case tick. I feel like it's one of those ones you've got to get right down deep to get all the layers. 
Cheers. 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 That is my kind of dessert. And the reason being... It's full of booze. It's... No. <laughs> it was a little bit of booze. It's not too sweet. But the dark chocolate mm. and the tofu, mm. the chunks of dark chocolate as well, and the sour cherries, yes, with a bit of booze, makes it delicious but not sickly sweet. That's really good. Which makes this decision very difficult. I think they're all incredible. I think that is the kind of thing that people will absolutely make with five ingredients because it's delicious. It plays the classic chocolate cherry flavour. The tofu thing's just a game changer for me. This one, I think you got more out of five ingredients than anyone else. So in terms of the brief, big tick, but I'm not sure that pizza dough as a dish is something you would do at home because you might as well just buy pasta and it would do the job. Because it's ridiculous. <laughs> and that was very Barry. Beautiful, lots oh, of oh, textures. Oh, and oh, and right. your plating. You. Oh. Do you want me and Mike to leave? <laughs> Beautiful in its presentation and very kind of artsy. It had the dimensions, it looked the best of all three. And it was executed well. In which case, if I had to pick a third place, not a loser, but a third place, it would be dessert due to its simplicity. And yet, it is super tasty, and I think it's the one that everyone at home will probably go out and make the most of. I think that's And fair. you should. I think the confidence fair. boost didn't. <laughs> <laughs> but my winner today, oh, is it best use of pizza dough or is it best use of cauliflower? My winner goes to... Barry. Cauliflower, it was a triple threat. Well, that's only what Ben thinks. Over to you guys, do you think he selected the right winner? And comment down below with what you would have done to mine and Jamie's dishes to give us more of a winning chance. And check out our Psychic app if you're interested in stretching your ingredients further, getting great meals on the table quickly and increasing your cooking skills. There's a 30 day free trial and there's now some five ingredient recipes in there too. It hurts me physically, but I'm not gonna lie to you, it's, well like, it's uncomfortable. Well I'm not used to done. it, it's uncomfortable. Any, any pointers, anything, any improvements? Spigamint. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been an extra one. I'd have to sacrifice my lemon.